Alrighty, Lumberjacks, welcome back to another Logging from Scratch episode. Uh, this time around, we're going to continue our plan here. So what I've done is I've actually decided I was going to sell the self-loader. Um, we we, we could have come down and picked all this up, but now that I have this beautiful machine with this beautiful giant grapple on it, um, I'm going to walk up this road and do like a little bit of cleanup work because I want to move these shorts out a little quicker than what we're doing right now. Now, what you could do is forward them all to one location like we're doing kind of right now, but what I want to do is I want to just pile them all up in a big pile right here. That way, <clears throat> when we do get our our uh, truck and trailer in here, we can just do a, a load of shorts, and it'll be one shot, one kill kind of deal. And it'll give us a reason to move all this stuff, so it's good. Oops. I am so not used to this gi new giant grapple. But I'm sure we'll get used to it in time. So let's put this... Again, this one has the locking straps. You can see it's popping up there. So if you feel like your logs are getting away on you, you can always just give it a little a little tap there. And I use the locking straps quite religiously now, which is I never thought I was going to. But um, the, biggest is, the biggest reason I use locking straps is because of frame rate drop. So for instance, if I'm holding these logs and I'm swinging them back and forth... Now, in real life, logs do slide, but on dry logs, they don't really do that. You see how they kind of look like they're... It's just freely kind of sliding around on its own. In winter, on ice, in real life, I've seen logs do that, but not so much uh, otherwise. So, I mean, they stay pretty solid, but now, basically, what I do is I have it on my... Uh, so, my left stick, the furthest right top uh, thumb button, just to tap it real quick. And then when I'm ready to drop, I just undo it. But it's just guarantees that they stay in the grapple and you don't have to worry about them getting away. Also, for people who are, uh, you know, see, like, there you go. That's a prime example of how they do that. Um, people who are uh, finding that they're crushing the logs, like, too much, which is becoming a problem for a lot of people, can now use the locking straps to get rid of that issue entirely. So, for instance, instead... Instead of crushing the logs completely down, so you can get a pretty good grip on them. Now, normally what you do is you'd want to crush them up as much as you can, but then you get this jittery issue where they kind of glitch out like that. So instead, if you're new and you don't feel comfortable using the grapple, when you go in for a grab, grab them, get them to about that point, and just lock it. You know, there's still lots of space in there, but now you know the logs aren't going to go away on you, right? They're not going to do anything out of hand. I'm just going to kind of slide these over here. Now, this grapple might be a tinch oversized. That was my one thought, but it's really good at moving wood, and you can get pretty accurate. I mean, if you want to do just little little amounts of wood, you can too, so it just gives you a little bit more accessibility. And because the logs are uh, kind of glitchy in this game, I think anybody will accept whatever they can get at this point for making it easier. So, for instance, this is a good example. So, if I crush too hard, they're going to start wiggling like crazy. So, even if I got to this point, you could just throw a locking strap on there and they're not going to go anywhere. So I just started doing that as a technique to have better grabs because I know in real life it's a whole different world for that. So hopefully it gives the loaderman a happier land to play with. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, so, hey, let's do a topic of the day because we haven't done one in a while. Uh, so I have a list. What's next on the list? Oh, man. Okay, here's one that I know not much about. Uh, Army versus Marines. Okay, so I'm coming from a background of, like, zero military knowledge, pretty much. So I couldn't tell you anything. And I know most of my uh, subscribers are from the States and a lot of military-oriented. So I'm more interested in your guys' opinion than my own on this one. Um, I've heard... I think I've heard more... And this is based on, like, Hollywood. I think I've heard more information about Marines than I have the Army. Everyone says the Marines are the elite core of the military versus the Army, which is more of a anybody can get in the Army kind of thing. Now, again, that is based on military media stuff that I've seen. I have no idea what the, the true truth is behind all that stuff, but maybe you guys can straighten that out for me in the comments section. What do you guys think? Would you rather be a Marine, or would you rather be in the Army? Now, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be 100% wrong, because I don't know much about that stuff, but um, 
the Marine Corps is like land, air, sea, I think, right? And then the Army is more of a like land-based kind of unit, right? I, I think. Because when I think the term, oops, when I think the term uh, Marines, I think, you know, water, right? So, and I know everybody says that they're, you know, a specialized unit or whatever the case there, so I don't know. Interesting. And those locking straps are acting a little weird on that one. But that's okay. We're just going to keep piling it up here. Again, this might not be the most efficient use of time for uh, for loading, but it's just, just wanted to get it all in one pile here. Mostly what I want to do is I want to clear up this road so that we can keep we can start doing loops and stuff. So I just want to get all of this out of here. And then uh, we can start in our project in the swamp there. Now what I wanted to do is I wanted to bring a buncher down. So whether we do that this episode or next episode, I do want to bring uh, like a big heavy duty buncher all the way down there so we can go clean up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to chase it with the processor. God, I always find it so weird in these machines. I, and it transfers to the videos, but some of the last videos I had were like super washed out. Every once in a while, like the HDR effect, like the lighting gets super bright in these cabs. And it's like, just looks super washed out and really weird. And I don't know what causes that. So what I did is I turned the uh, contrast down a little bit in the videos going forward. So hopefully, hopefully they transmit through a little bit better. Yeah, with those locking straps, it just gives you a lot more ability. Because in real life, what you can do is you can crush the logs hard enough that they hold each other all the way down to the bottom, like like it looks right now. But in this game, they just kind of wiggle out of the grapple. Like, they're, they're even wiggling about right now, even with the locking straps. So, I guess it just gives you a little bit more realism. I wish it just knew not to move once it was in a grapple or something, but... I don't think it's quite that smart. Like, I understand they have, like, automatic ones so that when you hover over an object, it automatically locks it. But, I mean, that just gets really haywire, too, because that's not at all how it's supposed to be. And then sometimes you're moving logs around. You don't want them to lock. I want to be the one to make that decision. I don't want the game to make that decision for me. Because then you could be, like, right here, and then suddenly, oh, that tree just locked to the grapple. And you're like, wait, that's not what I wanted. Because I want to shuffle them around. It's definitely a difficult system, but what do you do, right? I'm mostly excited because now we can get some like crazy grapples to or crazy grapplefuls of logs. I think I gotta lower that a little bit. I think that's the problem. So if I squeeze too tight, they kind of start to freak out a little bit. So I think I just need to drop that down. It's fun, though. That's why I like playing these single-player videos the most, because all the stuff I test with, um, it kind of comes out in the light here now. Um, we started a multiplayer series, uh, I think by the time this video is out, it should have started, which is called The Logging Crew. Um, so that's actually really fun. It's nice to get together with some, some other people to test out stuff in multiplayer and see how the equipment reacts with different people. Um, it's been a blast so far. We're having a really good time. If anybody's interested in joining the logging crew, you, you definitely have the option to come give it a shot. Um, so in the description of all our videos, including this one, you can see the join our Discord link or chat with us on Discord or whatever it says there. Uh, you can click that link. Uh, once you get to the Lumberjack Lobby, it's called, in the Discord, you can just either send me a message or send a request and I'll add you to the team to try you out. Um, there are a few rules and stuff for what's allowed and what's not allowed, so you guys can read the pinned messages if you go in there. Um, it's mostly just like, you know, no swearing, don't annoy people, don't fight with people. You know, regular common sense human stuff. Prison rules. <laughs> don't act up. But yeah, I mean, I welcome anybody to come join that. It's more of a kind of a public team. So it's kind of fun. And then we have the kind of more advanced team, which is the Logging Bros thing. That's kind of a more of a private thing. Depending on how good people are, we might open that up to more, more people down the road. But right now, it's kind of is where it is. Yeah, so it's good. I just wanted to get back into multiplayer. I missed it. I kind of, kind of got out of that for a little bit. So 
it's good to get back into multiplayer. Okay, so let's put this pile here, and then I think it's time to bring a buncher up. Buncher, and then we got to do some loading and all kinds of fun stuff. Now, the cool part of what we're doing right now, um, we don't have to do any processing on this landing. This landing is strictly for loading. That's all we're using this landing for. So we don't have to worry about processing logs. We don't have to worry about doing anything special with them. We're just throwing them on the trucks as we bring them in here. So that's nice. There we go. Looks good. It's kind of a funky pile, but that's okay. <laughs> we have a huge grapple, so we'll clean that up real quick. Uh, these were the ones I wanted to kind of take a peek at here. So I'm not really sure what we were doing planning on doing here because it was a while back now. Is this just a regular tree stump? Let's clean that up real quick. If I can. Oh, maybe I can't. No, I can't. Oh, okay. Well, that's where you want to be. Just use that as a baseline then or something. So these are all... Oh, maybe that's what I was doing is putting the big ones... No, because the little ones are at the back. I don't know what I was doing. So let's maybe shuffle bomb this stuff a little bit. And grab. What I was doing is kind of putting the small ones at the back here, but... I think I want to create two separate decks then if we're going to do small and large logs. So let's put these bigger ones kind of over here. And we'll get to those shorts soon enough. I'm not really in a big rush, so it's all good. And then what we'll do is anytime we bring the small pieces over, we'll just separate those and throw them against this mountain over here for now. Oh, we tried the locking straps. I haven't actually tried the locking straps on long logs. I bet they'll be a little more bouncy because the longs are much heavier. And I can't even remember what size we're cutting to. I think we're doing 15s maybe? Or maybe longer? Maybe 15s? So we'll find out when we get back in the processor. It should have saved it. Ooh, oh, that's heavy. Yeah, I see locking straps can't even hang on to that. So heavy. I mean, you probably shouldn't be moving that many giant trees at the same time anyway, but hey, whatever. Press the limits, right? Let's see what we can do. And then we'll go like this. I don't know. You guys can let me know about this machine. Do you think this grapple's too big, or do you think it's quite nice to have that? I, at times, kind of go like, eh, maybe it could be a little bit smaller, but also at the same time, I kind of enjoy having that, especially for shorts, when you're in shorts, you can just do huge grapples and fill up trucks faster, so. And I did do, like, some some uh, comparison uh, to, like, real life. I was looking at these power clams, and some of those power clams are actually way bigger than I thought they were, like, on the machines. So I think it's more about hydraulic power and what the machines can handle, but... I mean, like, this thing, I thought, like, when I bring it close to the machine, let's go get out of the cab and look. Like, to me, that looks huge, like, perception-wise. But, I mean, really, that's about as big of a grapple as you're going to get in there. But I went at a couple trade shows, and I stood next to those power clams, and, man, some of them, I could literally stand inside the grapples. They're huge. And they put them on, uh, they put them on Tiger Cats and John Deere's all over the place. So I was like, well, okay, well. Maybe uh, maybe it's not really out of proportion to have a really giant power clam grapple. So, I don't know. I think I'll leave it like that maybe for a bit. I do have some new ones coming out. Like, I'm going to have a smaller grapple for people who just want to start with, you know, the more chill stuff. But I kind of want to give the options with some different sizes and different things you can do. It's not all about production sometimes. It's about just, you know, working with the tiny stuff and making it happen. So let's park this guy actually back over here. So then next time when we bring a skid through, if there's small stuff on there, I can just pick it off, throw it in this pile, and then the big stuff we can just let drop and push forward. I think that'll be good. So let's uh, let's bring our uh, clam bunk around here for a drop because we do have a lot on there. Now, what I need to do going forward, and I don't know if I did it on this one. I probably did. But I want all the big stuff on the bottom and all the little stuff on the top. So hopefully I did that. Yeah, and it looks like that's what I did. That way, when we unload it, we can literally just scoop the little stuff off the top. 
And what I could do if we really want to get technical is I could, um, oops, let's raise that up a little bit more here. Um, what I could do is I could do a full load of just the little stuff. There we go. Full load of just the little stuff and save it up. And then just constantly do the big, longer pieces in between. The options are limitless. Just big old skitter. This thing's a blast. I actually got way better feedback for this thing than I thought I would. It's, uh, it just works so good. You can just load her right up and just give her... Now, like I said, because it's a rotating bunk, it just you just bounce it off of stuff. It doesn't even matter. So as you turn, it kind of turns, but then if there's a tree coming, you're like, oh, no, and then it's like, boop, just bounces it back off. <laughs> so there's no fear. No fear at all. There we go. We'll just kind of go like this. Actually, I wonder I wonder if I can scoop that stuff off the top with this guy. All the weight of the logs are making it slide forward. <laughs> oh, jeez. Because I think these are all pretty much little ones up front here. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and these want to go the other way for whatever reason. Let's actually stack these this way. That'll make more sense. Then we don't have to turn it quite as much. I want to go like this. There we go. Okay, well, let's grab these ones, which I'm sure we rotated this way on purpose originally, but now we don't want it like that. Do some ugly penciling here. And I just want all these ugly ones kind of off to the side. We can do a whole load of this stuff later if we want, but at least this way it's out of the good stuff. It's a lot harder to load this stuff than it is the other. So. Now, I don't think that's all of it. I think there's more on there. I think it's this little cluster ball right here. Oh. Oops. Oh, no. You know what we're going to do? We're just going to we're just going to knock this load off here. Let's just grab the whole kit and caboodle. There we go. We can just slam it on the ground. We'll get our skitter out of here. And we'll just park this guy over here for now. I kind of want to... Uh, one of these episodes, I want to drop that blade and I want to clean up this path and make like a nasty little road. Kind of grind it out a little bit. I like when there's dirt all over the place. It's kind of fun. Dirty roads means dirty equipment. Uh, let's go like this. And those we'll just kind of check over there for now. The fun of pickup sticks, eh? This actually used to be the most entertaining thing for me to do. Um, back in, like, Farming Simulator 2013. I used to just sit for hours on end with my really terrible joysticks that were configured really crappily. They didn't have all this smooth motion. It was all just, like, direct, direct control. So it was, like, jitter, jitter, jitter. It's like using your keyboard, I guess. Uh, and I would just, yeah, just walk around picking up sticks. I actually think I have a video. If you go look, it's pretty funny. Go look at my uh, old videos. Even if you go on YouTube and search FDR Logging Farming Simulator 2013 or something, you'll probably see like my very, very first videos where I sound like I was nine years old. Actually, I don't know how old I was when I first started. I think I've been doing this for, what, four years? Four years now? So what am I now? I'm 30 now. Oh, God, I'm so old. 30. So, yeah, 20, 24, 25, somewhere around there I was starting. That's so crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because before I started modding, I definitely uh, liked playing. It was a whole other ball of wax. I'll get 
these ones. Look at these pretty logs. Just kidding. They're pretty ugly, but we'll take it. And let's bump that one. There we go. So, yeah, I definitely highly recommend uh, abusing the locking straps. I know it seems like cheating, but if you really think about it, um, this game... This game's physics are also not realistic whatsoever, so it's not cheating. You're actually just bringing a little bit more reality back. <laughs> I thought about that when I put locking straps. I'm like, oh, it's just cheating. Now, cheating, in my opinion, would be if you're picking up loads like this. Like, you'll go over it and go like this, and that's how you're picking up loads. That would be cheating. <laughs> but if you're grabbing it and you got a decent grip, I just turn it on to ensure that that grip stays there. Because in real life, I don't know how many of you have seen or picked up a, a log in real life with an excavator or any kind of grapple. Um, but they do not slip and slide out of the grapple, out of control, um, when you're not waving it around the air. So, yeah. Good advice to go by. Alright, so let's park this bad boy right here. I'll we'll leave it here for now. Okay, so that does it up for this episode. Uh, when we come back, I think we're just going to probably bring a buncher up, I think is the next goal. Once we get that buncher up and rolling, we can uh, start knocking down some trees like a boss over there. And, uh, yeah, it should be good. So, yeah, anyway, if you guys liked the video, leave a like, leave a comment. Do not forget to subscribe. And if you're in the bush, don't forget to hug a tree. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.